Okay, so as I said, as I go through this, if you've got questions, stop me, um, interrupt, ask uh, clarifying questions, or if you need more information. As I said, I think we'll be done, I'm hoping maybe about 45 minutes today. Let's start with our, um, our Sarah prayer for vocations. If I can get my, oh, okay, right. Okay, we'll start with our Sarah prayer for vocations. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh God, who wills not the death of a sinner, but rather he be converted and live, grant we beseech you through the intercession of Blessed Mary ever Virgin, St. Joseph her spouse, St. Juniper or Sarah and all the saints, an increase of laborers for your church, fellow laborers with Christ to spend and consume themselves for souls through the same Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. So today we're just going to talk about two things. Just mm -hmm. first one, the district governor position itself. And then secondly, how do you do the club officer training? Because I, I know some of you who have done this in the past may have some really great suggestions, but we want to talk about that and make sure that we're doing training. Sometimes I think one of the most important things a district governor can do is to make sure that all the officers in the clubs that belong um, to, that, um, to that district, are the officers are trained. And you okay. really want to, we'll talk a little bit about it. You don't want to wait too long to do that because sometimes that can just get away from you. So we'll talk a little bit about that, about that training today. So first of all, that district governor, oh, there's a picture of Diana, actually, the person I just said broke her hip. No. She's, uh, she's in the center, the first row, she has red hair and she has a pattern jacket on. But um, so keep Diana in your prayers. She hmm. said she was in rehab for, um, I think she said she was in a, a rehab facility for a couple of weeks and just got out. Okay. So that position, and I think really that key to being a really great district governor is that, that servant leadership, that idea that I'm going to serve. I'm committed to helping develop others and then help those others put their the disposal of organization. And really that's your job. It's not as a self-serving where I'm only interested in privilege or power or prestige. You want to serve or you probably would not have taken this position because that's what this is all about. It's that servant leadership. What's your primary job? You're a cheerleader for the clubs in your district. And you are the one who has to keep those clubs informed about all the policies the priorities, the different programs, whatever training's available. You'll get the information before they will. And it's your job to disseminate that information. Your regional director sits on our board and hears everything that's going on. And that regional director will then funnel that to you. And your job is to make sure that your clubs know it. And sometimes I think we make the mistake, at least I found that I've done this, thinking that if I give the information to the club president, it's going to get to the vice president of membership or the vocation vice president. And that's not always the case because um, many times, I'm speaking from experience, many times the, the president's not funneling that information too. So it'd be really great if you had access to the um, contact information for the club officers. You also want to provide opportunities for clubs to come together and share best practices. You may be gathering your the presidents of, of your clubs um, on a regular basis. You may also want to think about uh, doing something for um, the officers. You want to help the clubs develop those leadership skills. I keep hearing from clubs that there's no one, they can't find anyone to take those leadership positions. And sometimes that's because they don't, they haven't taken that time to develop those skills or they haven't looked around to see who is in their club and some of the wonderful resources available in the clubs themselves. Um, you also want to be aware of the strengths and weaknesses of each club because you're going to know that some clubs are just going to be really apt at raising money or um, uh, 
getting members, you'll know which ones those are. So you'll be aware of those strengths and the weaknesses of every single club. You also, and we really need help with this, develop those future leaders because while you're in your position, you need to be thinking in the back of your head in two years or three years, you wanna replace yourself. So you begin looking right now for that district, um, that district governor elect. You also wanna be looking for possibly regional directors. Who are they? Is there anybody in your club, in one of your clubs that, that could possibly step in? Or even on the US Council, because you will see those people and you will know um, the ones who probably should be uh, going on to leadership on the council. And we really wanna hear about them. And then of course that recruit and train that replacement for yourself. You know, two years, three years, four years, but once we start getting much more than like five years, um, it's really time to have looked around and found someone. And welcome, Candace. I see you just came on. Hi. And Candace is new. She's not, I think she's coming on. She, when, are, when do you take office? Um, June 1st, I believe. This is the second time I'm district governor. Excellent. Okay. So thank you. Those are the kinds of things that we're we're looking at for the the district governor. But now, what is your what, what is your perfect Sarah Club look like? It's got to be prayer based. It's not a social club. He gads. Um, it's not uh, like the Elks or the Lions or something like that. It's it's prayer based. So that's one thing. You know, it's because from that prayer, then we move to action. So there's always got to be that active vocations work going on in the club. Um, and if there are people who are not in Sarah, like maybe the spouses or people who are on the peripheries, we want them praying for vocations too. That perfect Sarah club, look at the officers. Are they a team? Are they acting as a team or are they all like solo players? Are they all like little silos out there? We wanna see those officers acting as a team and seeing how they can interact. The mission is always gotta be at the forefront. We're not a fundraising organization. We're an organization that um, prays for vocations, prays and encourages and supports vocations to the uh, priesthood and the vowed religious life. That is our number one job to be looking for those vocations. There was an article in our secular newspaper this morning about um, uh, the, the priest shortage. And what it was dealing with was talking about, it's, it mentioned the Archdiocese of Chicago. And it said that 50% uh, of the active priests in the Archdiocese were not born there. They're importing foreign born priests because it's such a vocation crisis in Chicago. I was not aware that it was that drastic, but it's in the secular press right now. So we want to remember that because what we're doing is, is so critically important. We, you also want to look at the Sarah Clubs and see what kind of programs they're running. Um, are there programs like informing and inspiring members to carry out that mission? There's also sometimes um, clubs forget that other part where we do some, some formation actually for the Sarans there just to help them know their Catholic faith a little bit better. So um, I think that the, the call to holiness manual and the program manual are both great resources for, uh, for programs that we can run in our clubs. And the club knows, knows that it's part of a larger organization. They know that there is a US council. They know that there's a region. They know that there's Sarah International. They know that we have a, 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 a foundation. They have to be aware of, of what we're doing and what we're part of. So I think that becomes part of what you're doing because you'll be the one to give them that information. I don't know that they go out and find it on their own. Another important thing, um, is that club updating the bishop? Is, does that club know the vocation director? Does the club know the name of the secretary of the bishop and the name of the secretary or assistant of the vocation director? You want to really encourage them to be involved with their, with their, their diocese. 
And in some ways, that's going to be your job of meeting with the bishop along with them just to make sure that that's happening. The club knows it's, it's, um, it has that joy, it is energetic, and it's really proud to be part of Sarah International. So again, that's got to go back to they know they're part of something greater. Um, it's really good to, to let them know the name of our Episcopal moderator, who is Bishop uh, Thomas Daly, the name of the SI um, moderator, who is uh, Bishop, and I just blanked his name. Would you believe this? Help me. Sally, what's, what's Cardinal's name? Cardinal Collins. 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 Yes. Collins. I was trying to get unmuted. Yeah, Collins. Yes, what a great man. He's going to be in uh, Miami, too, so he'll be visiting us there. What an outstanding person, yes. But we want to make sure that they know those, those, those people. Um, for you, your contacts are going to be the club presidents. I mean, that's, that's just normal. Um, but also the vocation director. And if the vocation director has an assistant, I think we're seeing that more and more. Does anybody else, like we have, um, our vocation director has an assistant and our vocation director um, takes care of um, the guys in the seminary and his assistant is the one who's looking for new vocations and doing things with our young people. Anybody else have different um, uh, ways, configurations in their diocese in the vocation office. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're real fortunate in that our um, vocation director assistant is a member of our club. So we have a direct line to her, which is also a direct line to him. That is perfect. That's perfect. The, the club in uh, Oklahoma City, one of their members is the bishop's secretary and her son is the vocation director, uh, Father uh, John Paul Lewis. That's really, I mean, that's the way to have it. Yeah. 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 Anybody else have interesting configurations in your vocation office? Well, we have just like you, this is Candace Ann, and we have uh, our our vocation director, Father Richard McNeely, has an assistant, and she goes around and visits the different parishes and makes sure they have a vocation ministry, and then she invites them to join the Sarah Club in their area also. Oh, so. wow. That is nice. Mm -hmm. That's that's really great. Yeah. You're He's blessed. wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You also want to know. Oh, yes. Somebody else. And in, in, in the Dallas Fort Worth area, we have two bishops, one in Fort Worth and one in Dias and or in Dallas. And each of them yeah. has an assistant. And uh, we have very good working relationship with both, both of them, both the bishops and the assistants. Yes. I was really, they, they uh, both came to the Dallas rally. I, I don't know if they came no. to each rally, but I mean, it was great to have them there and just to, to get to know them. Yeah. Um, so those bishops in your district, consider meeting with them once a year, along with the club president and maybe the club president elect uh, from each diocese. So like um, our diocese, my diocese here has two clubs. So our district governor would meet with the bishop with both those club presidents and president elect. Um, you may just have, if you're depending upon your area, you may just have uh, the one bishop and many clubs going in to that. I'm um, trying to think maybe like Kansas City probably has a number of um, clubs in that that's, area. That's right, Ann. We have you know four clubs. So we just met in December with the archbishop, Nauman, and then the vocation director. So they both gave reports uh, to us, the, the Sarans, but then we, each president gave a report what each club was doing to the archbishop uh, before our, our, that was all before our regular meeting. That was excellent. That's yeah. really good. And it builds that relationship with, with the bishop and the vocation director. Right. It's recommended that you have, like when you, talk to the bishop, you want to meet with him, you maybe have an executive summary ready to him mm -hmm. and you send that to him before the meeting. Oh, and okay. Don't read it. I mean, allow him um, to ask questions or if he has any input, but just that, send that, that executive summary 
one page to him uh, or to his secretary or to both uh, beforehand. So he has a chance to look at it and know what you're doing. When you're gonna meet with him, just request 20 minutes. You'll get a lot longer, but it shows that there's sort of like a respect for his time. Um, and it's, I think the, the meetings with the bishops uh, is, is always like a, a high point, I think for any of the clubs. It's so great to just meet with them and, and allow yeah. them to talk to you, yeah. And, and what, then, is, what is the name of the person that just spoke? It says Pat. What is your last name? McEnany. Mac, McEnany? Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay. He's from Kansas City. I heard uh, him say that, and I was just wondering his name, full name. Okay, thank you. You're uh, in addition to, to taking on district governor, Kansas is, Kansas is also uh, vice president for membership, so she's always trying to find out more about our members yeah well i'm taking it on because pearl campbell couldn't find anyone we couldn't know everyone said no so it's like no i said okay i need to take it since you know so that's why i'm district governor and and you heard the slide before this said you need to be looking constantly for those people yes so that's mm -hmm. a, that's an excellent thing to do yeah true yeah, and then know your regional director because that's gonna be a really good support. As I said, they sit on the board, they get the the, the board mailings, they they have all that information and they their job is to please share it with you. Yeah. Strategy for success, call your club presidents. I don't think that can be understated. You know, three or four times a year, call them. It, depending upon, you know, where you are, um, like our, my region, my, my district is uh, our state of Indiana. I'm in Indiana. So it's just the state. So, boy, I can drive, you know, from one end to the other in probably six hours. So it's not that, it's not that arduous. So sometimes you can just go and meet your club presidents personally, you know, for, for coffee or just a sit down meeting or visit the clubs, you know, mm -hmm. once a year, go visit them and be a program speaker. And we'll give you some information. We'll give you canned programs that you can actually just use and make that your presentation. Every spring, offer that club officer training because the, the it's got to be done. Those new officers need to be trained and you can probably do it best. And you will be able to do it best because the... Um, the next two sessions that we do, Thursday and Friday, there will be um, pieces from that PowerPoint that you can just lift and use it for the training. So um, there'll be information on vocations, information on um, the foundation, on SI, on the U.S. Council. There'll be information for membership, for um, um uh, vocations for programs for communication so all this will be available and you can take those powerpoints use them as is or rip them apart and make them um make them fit your style so that'll be that'll be available and then if if and i i don't necessarily recommend this but if you don't feel you can do that then you make sure all your officers attend the online spring training, which uh, probably Mike and I will be doing in uh, April or May. So that will be available also, but we need to get those officers trained. Also participate in regional conference calls with your um, regional director. And hopefully the regional director is doing that um, on uh, every other, every couple of months, just getting you and all the other district governors together um, and just sharing best practices and just seeing how everything's going. Attend the webinars for the U.S. leadership. And we offer webinars, like there will be a webinar um, and it will probably be, uh, I'm gonna think it's gonna be late spring, especially for treasurers because we do a separate treasurer training because their job is so important. So that might be something that would be very interested, interesting for you or attend those um, meetings, the monthly meetings that our vice presidents do. And I think January, uh, next Monday, I'm positive it's next Monday, um, there will be a, a, a webinar uh, for uh, vocations and uh, Moralette, who is our, our um, 
Vocations VP will be um, handling that webinar, but think about attending those because they're really excellent. Go to the rally. I can't say enough about how wonderful that rally is. Um, we were in Dallas for the last two years and it was just, it was, it was amazing. The speakers were great and the people you meet are just, are just wonderful and it's so informative. Um, and then if that's not enough, go to the SI conference too. So we're going to be in New Orleans um, this August, which would, will be uh, amazing. And if you still, if you're still a glutton for punishment, and you want to do something else, come to the uh, National Eucharistic Congress in Indianapolis, which is just down the road from me, uh, in uh, July, July 17 to 21, because we'll have a whole venue there um, uh, for Sarah. So please come to that. Yeah. Also, keep adequate records of contact information for all your club officers, and then share that with the council, because sometimes uh, we don't have our, the most accurate records. You're going to be the one probably with your finger on the, the pulse of those uh, clubs in your district. So be prepared to share that with us. Remember, contact the clubs that are, oh, this is a hard one. Uh, contact clubs that are in arrears. Uh, we'll tell you, um, usually at the board meeting, the treasurer will go through and tell us, well, usually, no, at the board meeting, the treasurer, who is Candace's husband, Ed, will go through and tell us what clubs are um, in arrears for either their U.S. or their SI dues. And uh, if your job is to just gently contact them and see if there's a problem or if, if they need any help or whatever. Uh, you also want to make sure that your clubs have filed um, their, their statements, the uh, 990 or the IRS, and that they're compliant. Uh, we want to make sure they did that. We had a problem a couple years ago, but I think um, the Bob Campany got that straightened out, and I haven't heard anything from Ed, and it sounds like our, our clubs are doing well. Encourage, to the clubs should submit proxies for that uh, annual SI meeting. Um, if they don't have an officer attending, so if they don't have somebody going to New Orleans, then they can submit that, can submit a proxy, um, and they can um, they can actually ask you to do it. They can ask you, they can give you their proxy, and then you can vote. So just maybe a phone call as we get closer to that, just to see if they're sending someone, or if not, if they can give you their proxy. If there's going to be a new club in your district, oh my gosh, you need you need to help with that. Uh, right now, I'm I'm hearing Candace probably knows better than I am, but I'm hearing like a club in Chicago, the Chicago area is starting. Anything else, Candace? Um, St. Augustine in Florida starting. Uh, they're having their meetings. The bishop has allowed it, and and the vocation director assigned uh, Father Stillmunk. So I'm really excited about that. Excellent. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's going great guns. I'm really, really thrilled with that. Yeah. There's more than that that I can't think right now. Yeah. So. We have well, there's a priest, uh, Manhattan, priest of Manhattan is interested. Oh, yes, New York City. Thank you, James. Yes, that's right. Thank yeah. you, Jane. Jane's helping with that. So thank you, Jane. Excellent. Sure. Uh, we have a new cl uh, club we're working on in Southeast Kansas. That's right. Uh, Yes, I knew that. Can't think of the Sarah clubs. I'm sorry? It's like that Midwest, that, that mm -hmm. other Midwest. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> and um, we have one we're working on in Tyler, Texas, also. Wow. Who said that? Who was that that said that? Bill Moore. Bill, Bill, wonderful. That's great. That's I've fantastic. Really that. Gotten yeah. a little bit off the rails since. Uh, uh, Bishop Strickland left, but uh, we're going to re-energize it and see if we can't run it through the finish line. Great. Excellent. So any anytime you hear about a new club or even a, a group thinking about it, that's that, that can be part of your responsibility, and Candace will help you with that. Let me know. Yes. Thank you. And then assist in regional conference planning. You know, if your district is having a regional conference, you should be involved with that. You know, talk to your regional director, or if 
or if your region isn't having one, maybe that's to put a bug in your regional director's ear. Encourage clubs and individual Sarans also to contribute to the SI Foundation annually. I think every club, um, this is another thing that you could encourage because uh, I think it was last year, we really pushed for the clubs to get an, uh, a foundation representative and put that on their leadership in, as part of their leadership. Not every club did that. And I still don't think we have a good representation, but encourage clubs um, to get that, uh, appoint someone to be that uh, foundation representative. And then also the clubs can contribute to the SI Foundation annually. Um, recommend clubs to, to um, SI or US Council Awards as appropriate because there will be, um, especially I'm thinking of the, the newsletter award. If you know a club that's doing a good newsletter, make sure they're, they're submitting that. And anything else, the membership, um, the uh, Missionaries of um, Unipera Sarah Award too for membership. Make sure your clubs are doing that, uh, that they've applied. Candace, when's the deadline for that? To oh apply? my goodness. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that. I don't know. Okay, check with it though. Oh, and oh you're saying for the Missionaries of Sarah contest yes. when the deadline for that is? The end yes. of January, January 30th, I'm sorry. Okay, January 30th is the deadline. Yeah, so, so please so, register, please register. Yeah, I mean, that's an easy thing for clubs to do. And there's mm -hmm. awards for big clubs and small clubs. So yeah, definitely. And we want that. all clubs to register. Yes, please. Your expenses. We ask, and I, I hear some clubs say, oh, I never heard of this. And my club's been doing this since my gosh, years and years ago, as long as I can remember. The clubs actually have a fee of $3 a member, we do this, and a $1.50 for sponsors, um, to the club of the district governor to help with costs of the district governor's travel, training, out-of-pocket expenses. Um, and they can withdraw from this uh, as needed. Check and see if that doesn't exist within your district. I know, as I said, ours, maybe it's an Indiana thing, but our, our um, all the clubs in our state have always done that. And it's it's just helpful because sometimes that mileage just adds up or if you're you're traveling someplace, but definitely please check and see that if, you're, if your club's gonna offer this. Um, resources you can use, your regional director, other DJs, your district ma governor manual. Go to the website. There's a district governor resource page on the website and the manual is there. And it's a, it's a great resource for you just to download and have at your fingertips. Um, but um, there are other things. Remember I just said, oh, if you want to do some sort of a a training or you need to you want to speak for a program you're going to find resources on that uh, district governor resource page so make that a second home bookmark that and go look and see if everything that's there the your toolkit well of course you're going to have to have a go to meeting or a zoom account or even a free conference call.com for your meetings it's just easier I use GoToMeeting because that's what I've always used and I'm just used to it. Um, some people will use Zoom. Um, I bought my own subscription simply because I, I want to have it. If you would like, John Liston can um, uh, set up a Zoom uh, or GoToMeeting account for you uh, through, the, um, through the Chicago office. So definitely take him up on that. Or in a pinch, I know Mike Downey has given his go-to meeting. Um, he just used it for the vocations meeting, I think, a couple of months ago. So please let us know how we can help with that. Keep that group email list of your presidents, of your treasurers, of your club officers. And I would actually put them, I would group them together by their role. Because if sometime you may just want to email uh, someone in a particular role and make sure that they all get it. And it just might be easier that way. The presentations I talked about, these are good. And so one is called membership. It's more than just ask, asking. And it just tells you how to increase membership. So this is nice for clubs to hear. 
10 Keys to a Successful Club. This is a, a, a good talk, um, maybe the first time you go and visit a club. Why Sarah is special, that's another great one. The new member orientation is really, really great. So definitely check that out. We actually used it, um, uh, our bishop usually lets us use his residence for our membership, uh, our membership call out and use that new member orientation and just sort of played that for people to see while they were there. But again, look at those district governor resources. There's also a great presentation um, uh, and it's written on um, St. Junipero Serra, which might be really interesting for clubs to hear. Anne, um, yes. I, I, did, I have a PowerPoint. If anyone's interested, they can email me and I'll send them the PowerPoint slides that I used at the NCDVD. More or late, put it together. But the last slide, I added the charter, um, one year charter with all the Hispanics and the bishop on it. So that's the last picture in it. But it's a really nice membership PowerPoint for anyone to have at their program meeting the show or for new members, welcoming new members also, it gives a lot of good information. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, the resources are there, just ask us for it. But this, this is a, a little thing Mike Downey put together. This is nice for you to have, to put something like this together for the clubs in your district, just to see like your the names of the clubs, like first Sarah, second, but put the names there. And then what's been their membership? What's what's going on there? So it's 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 really helpful um, to look at is the club growing? Is the club suffering? What's what's happening there? Like that first Sarah Club, it went from 43 in 11 to 27 in 16. That's a that's kind of significant. I'd want to know what was happening over there. Um, the same thing with that third Sarah Club from 55 to 22. What was there um, infighting? What was going on there? You know, was there a change in membership or or what? Or did everybody was was the membership all older people and now they have no younger ones coming to take over? This is a nice thing for you to put together because it gives you um, something to think about, but then it also gives you a conversation that you can have with uh, your club officers and especially with the presidents. Um, other stats that's good to have, how many seminarians are in your diocese? How many are, are in, the, in the district? And even, you know, who are they? How many Catholics are in your diocese? How many Catholics in your district? I ask this question, like when I go someplace, I'm just kind of interested. And sometimes they can't tell me, and this isn't helpful, so I end up Googling it just to try and find it out. I talked to, uh, I was asked to talk to San Jose, uh, someone in San Jose during Christmas week. And I, I thought, well, I don't think that it's a small, I mean, San Jose, the diocese is not, it's not that large, but they had 600,000 Catholics. That really told me something about, about what was, what was going on there. So that number of Catholics is good. And then what kind of fees are your clubs collecting? What is their dues? I'm all, always interested, um, not just the dues uh, and the fees, but also when and how do they meet? You know, when do they gather? The, the uh, uh, Rosemary's uh, area, we went to a, there in the, the Denver area and they, they gathered for breakfast. They made an amazing breakfast and there were all these people there and that's when they have their meetings. Like our club gathers at night and we used to meet at a restaurant, except the restaurant closed. So now we're basically trying to find a place to meet. So um, still haven't found a, ha haven't found a home like that. But it's, it's interesting just to hear those differences and then it gets you acquainted with the club. Um, the new member startups. Wow, Candace is the expert here. Refer to the quick, the club quick start manual. I can't say enough about this. Everyone tells me how much, how wonderful it is and it just makes it easier for you. But, and Candace just said it, if the Bishop says no, we don't do go there. We don't do this. We've got to have the support of that local ordinary. The Bishop has to be behind this. I remember I, I met with people in Orlando about seven years ago, 
met with them a couple of times. I went back and forth with the people and with the vocation director. The bishop uh, wouldn't agree. So Orlando still does not have big place. Orlando still does not have um, a, a mm. Sarah club, which is kind of mm. sad, but we've got to have the, the bishop's backing. Address the a question, why a Sarah club? What can the Sarah club do for you? I remember when I went to Orlando, I thought I did a really good job convincing the vocation director, but evidently he didn't convince the, the bishop. Begin formation meetings uh, as quickly as possible and have the group start acting as a Sarah club. And what's the quickest way to do that? By praying. Hey, Candace, are you doing, a, am, I, am I wrong? Are you doing an online rosary with someone? Yes, with Sacramento, actually. There's one tonight at nine o'clock central that I'll be on. Yes, we've been doing that since May, though. So I, I need to talk to Father. Father's on it sometimes. You know, we have different amounts of people. But uh, but I want to go back to what you said. The Quick Start Manual is fantastic. And that's how we um, I worked with Father Miguel to start that Hispanic club. If I didn't have that Quick Start Manual, it would have just it would have been probably a nightmare because the quick start manual is long also, but you, I just highlighted in yellow the parts that I thought that would be the quickest to charter a new Sarah club. So Anne's right. That is a great tool, that quick start mm -hmm. manual. Yeah. yeah. And yes, Another praying, thing. praying the rosary. Yes, that's how the Hispanic club started also. And still to this day, they were praying a rosary on Zoom every Monday. And now they're praying it every Monday and Friday. And they're up to 92 members in one year in the Hispanic wow. circle club. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And then in addition to praying that rosary, adopt a seminarian. I mean, who can resist when you adopt one of those, one of those seminarians, you know? Or just have everybody pick one that they're going to pray for daily, and make sure you've got all the seminarians covered. And if you if you run out of seminarians, look for other religious in formation uh, in other places. We've got a young man in our parish who's in formation for the Marian Helpers in Sturbridge, Sturbridge, Massachusetts. I think that's where it is. But um, so we pray for him too, because we've got seminarians and we've got Andy, and we pray for him. Um, and then make sure those parishes within the area, have them begin to, 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 to talk about Sarah Club. Have them begin to pray that Sarah prayer for vocations on a regular basis. That, I'm, I'm never going to stop talking about that. We started the Sarah prayer for vocations, um, uh, let's see, a year ago last August. And in um, less than 18 months, we had two vocations from, from the parish. So just wow. that little bit of every um, weekend liturgy saying the Sarah prayer for vocations, which we pasted on the cover of our missalettes, on the inside cover of the missalettes, just to do that. And we got two vocations, you know, granted they're just beginning vocations, but hey. wow, it's, it's powerful. Okay. Any questions or comments on the district governor's job description? Because now you know what you're supposed to do. So, Anne, this yes. is Pat. Yeah. Um, one of the things I was thinking about doing was going to the, before I meet with the club itself, was to meet with the board. So that would be the VPs and stuff like that. Yeah. And just, just get a good feeling from them about their strengths and their weaknesses before before I meet with the club. Does That's that make sense? Excellent. That's yeah. excellent. Yeah. I hadn't heard that. So I just thought that the leadership is, is the best one to talk to and to get a feel from them how they think things are going and and to um yeah and then think about how to address the club. Oh I agree. I think that's a great okay. idea. Okay. Yeah, because then you're you're, a, you're with a smaller group and you mm -hmm. you get yeah. to know them and they get to know you. Yeah, right, Great. right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody else questions? And I have a question. This is Candace again. Yeah. When when you pray the vocation prayer, is that like does the priest lead that after mass or does a siren go up or do how is that done? Okay. As mass starts, the cantor gets up and says, "Welcome to the Cathedral of Saint Mary the Immaculate Conception." Please join us in praying our Sarah Prayer for Vocations found on the inside cover of your missalette. 
And then she, she starts, oh God, or she does the sign of the cross. And then everybody prays it. And then mass starts. Then she introduces who the celebrant is going to be in mass starts. Oh, that is beautiful. Our priest doesn't allow us to do it um, on the altar. Or, so he, when they, when they leave the altar, I asked, lady starts it. And so when she's not there, I start it. We just started in the congregation after yes. the priest and the deacon leave the, the altar. So. Excellent. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes they'll say um, if it's, if it's parishioner led, they will allow it. So that's fine. I mean, but one mm -hmm. way or another, I think saying that, that, that prayer for vocations is. Uh, yes. Yes. Powerful. Yes. If your priest doesn't allow it, go ahead and have someone after they leave the altar, lead it in the congregation. Yes. Excellent. Good. Anybody else? Okay. Let me go to the second part here. The mechanics of club officer training. Why? Because they need the information. They need to be inspired and we need to develop them. Um, sometimes, you know, when we say someone's like, if, if there's a bad officer, it's because we haven't spent time making sure that they're developed or that they've got all the information they need. Um, if you're going to do a training, like a lot of clubs will do a, a, like a day training. Usually this is going to be on a Saturday because that's going to be the easiest time for people to get together. Begin with mass. Uh, if the parish has mass, you can just, you know, use that mass or, or invite your bishop or your vocation director there for the training. Um, Find someone as a keynote speaker, because in addition to the training, we want a little bit of inspiration. So see if there isn't somebody um, who can be that speaker. Maybe it's a priest from the diocese or call somebody from the, uh, the, the U.S. Council or call your regional director. I mean, he needs to get around or she needs to get around. So ask them if they would come. So you've got your keynote, you've had mass, you have a keynote, and then breakout training for each officer and their committees. So put all the vocation VPs and their committees together and then all the membership and allow the, you know, provide some sort of a training for them. Um, I think it's Saturday. Saturday, the material I give you on Saturday will be specific for each one of those uh, committees. So you can just use that. Maybe you can make a handout or, or um, use the PowerPoint with them. When the training's over, do an evaluation. Ask them what they liked, how they, you know, what could be improved, what they would like to see. But that, that, that training is going to be one of the most important things that you do. Look at something, maybe um, a, a different kind of reading to use for that. It could be something for um, about Unipero Serra that Pope Francis address that he gave to the Serans in 2017 in Rome was amazing because he, um, he uses some some great um, oh a, an analogy comparing Sarans to a Bethany, where Christ when he was tired and when he needed to be renewed he went to Bethany and met with Martha and Mary and Lazarus and just relaxed. And Pope Francis says, you know that's what you do with Sarans, you just allow priests to come and they can relax and sometimes they're just you know, gossiping or, or unloading on you, but it's that, it's that time to give them a, sort of a renewal so they can go back to their ministry. Think too about the call to holiness manual. Hey, that's being redone as we speak. And I think uh, Maury Rustuisi, I, I hear that it's going to the printer very soon. So uh, hopefully that's gonna be, that will be, hopefully it's gonna be ready in, in for the rally, I'm not sure yet. Also think about maybe one of the patrons of your diocese. Do you know the patron of your diocese? Our diocese is, uh, our cathedral is uh, Mary of the Immaculate Conception. So that's our patroness. So what about your diocese? What's, who's the patroness? And maybe so it's some kind of a reading on that, but give them some, some little bit of meat for the day too. When do you train? Uh, it just depends. Um, when are the officers taking taking uh, uh, taking on their new role? Um, usually, I'm going to think that's that's spring. So if it's spring, if you start training in January, that's going to be too early because you're going to miss some of the new people. If 
you wait until September, it's too late. Nobody's going to come because they've already started. Uh, and then also, <clears throat> there's going to be graduations, vacations, ordinations, other sacramental celebrations. Spring is is loaded, but um, it's not. I, I, we've done it. We usually use it in April, so we'll actually do the online training in in April to April and May. <clears throat> but that's a good time to begin, and then looking at who are those new officers. So train in April and May um, and utilize the U.S. Council Officer Training Webinar. So we'll give you those and you can, you can utilize them. And then follow the training with a district meeting for all your club officers. You know, invite them to come together just to share and talk about best practices. The in-person training for like a full day or a half day, we usually do it. Um, Starts with mass, uh, there's lunch, but I'm thinking we're done by two, just in case people have to travel. Um, and you get, it's nice because you're together. It's so, it's so energizing when you're sitting with someone from other clubs and hearing about what, what they do. And I mean, it gives you lots of good ideas. Um, and it gets all those different clubs together in your district. And it's great to share ideas among the club officers because it'll happen in the breakout sessions, but then very informally too, at meals or just sitting around um, waiting for something to, to start. Sometimes uh, there's low attendance. It just depends. Um, as I said, you know, for us, we usually have it like in the, the, the middle of the state. So the most anybody's gonna drive is probably four hours. But that's still, that could be a little, that could be a little arduous. Um, so those driving and um, the distance might be, might, might cause low attendance. And it might be hard to find a time and a place. It almost has to be on a Saturday um, because most people, a lot of people will be working during the week. So it's gonna have to be uh, some sort of a weekend. Um, when you do that, make sure you've got car, hard copies of all your materials for the attendees and so that they've got it there and they can use it for note taking and they can use it for any kind of takeaways. Um, the web based training. So this is you using PowerPoint or the people coming to us for the for the spring training. Um, attendance is going to be a little bit better uh, because they can go by, you know, attend by phone or by computer. And then um, you can offer different times for the same session. When we do our spring um, training, huh, we will do it, um, we will repeat it, the same training three times. Drives me crazy, but we do it three times. So um, like for vocations, we'll offer that three times. So they'll be able to come in an afternoon, uh, an evening, and on a weekend. So it will be, it'll take a while to get completed, but they'll have that opportunity um, to have different, different times that might work. And the training, it can be broken up over several weeks. Yeah, because it'll take almost a whole month to complete the training. Um, you can do breakout rooms. Um, you can send, if you're doing a group, a group training, you can have all the vocation people put them in a breakout room and the same thing with the membership people. So that is a, that is a possibility. Uh, and then you can get all your, you can do this too. I've seen clubs get all the officers together at one location and they all sit through the training together, which is nice for them. The disadvantage, there's no, there's no, that, that personal interaction is gone. You know, there's something so energizing when you're all in the room together. Um, and it's very limited opportunities to meet people from other clubs. Um, some this is possible. Some officers may find it technically challenging to connect. That might be a little difficult. Um, and some might only want the conference call and not a computer. And so, I mean, it's fine if you're not using a computer, but what you what you miss then is the the visual. So that's a that that provides a difficulty. And remember, if you're going to do this, you've got to be comfortable using those web based tools. Um, and then you want to make sure that you've got that they've got copies of everything in advance. In lieu of training, what can you do? Well, tell your clubs to do some sort of um, training for different um, committees during their monthly meeting. 
take 15 minutes and the whole club is going to hear about what the vocation committee does and what the vocation VP does. Um, and you can even use one of the presentations that, that we'll give you. Um, I don't know that it's optimal, but it, it's interesting because everybody then hears what happens with vocations. Everybody hears what the job of membership does, and we all learn. Um, it's piecemeal. That's a disadvantage because it only skims the surface because there's not a lot of depth there because no one, this is um, the people whose job it is are hearing it in addition to everybody else that's in the room. Uh, it does get the officers off the hook because they don't still don't know what's required of them. Um, it's better than nothing though. Um, and at least all our club members will hear the presentation. Um, if this is in the fall, then make sure you get those club officers very early in their, their term. Don't wait. Make sure you grab them while they're, they're still enthusiastic. This is the one I said. The treasurer, it's just much more technical than anybody. So it's really a lot more, um, a lot more training is required because it's, they've got to have accounting skills. They have to have tax skills. They need to know how Club Express, which is the new portal, works. So this is going to be a lot more technical. Um, and well, I've been a club treasurer, and I'm still not sure that I could do this training. Um, so for anyone who hasn't been a club officer, who isn't an accountant, I'm not an accountant, um, it's better to let um, someone else with that background do the training. So the US Council uh, web-based training, I think Ed will be part of it. And I don't know if Bob Campany helps out, but Mike will and have them attend that. That is probably gonna be your best bet. Um, the treasurers have to be trained for financial accountability. That's, that is absolutely, that's absolutely critical. And when they do an audit, uh, it's not, it really, we don't want the officers doing, we want somebody else, somebody else coming in and doing that audit. Um, the treasurer should also provide an exact uh, copy of their checking account statement at every single board meeting, every single board meeting, so that the whole board knows what the finances are. And then, the club president needs to be asking for that in advance. We'll talk about this more throughout the next, um, our next two sessions, but this is a really critical, um, a critical piece here that we, we want to have a good club treasurer. Questions? So, and this is Pat again. Um, yeah. So you, Sierra International has a lot of training for the VPs. Yes. Um, and so I'm a little confused then. If if they're going through that, vocations, treasure, on and on and on, what's the governor's role? To make sure that they're doing it? Or I, I don't understand why we would have a set aside a Saturday if they're already going through the training through SI. They don't need to. We offer the training because some people won't train in person. Right. So we're 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 saying training is so important that one way or another we want to get these people trained. But yeah. isn't it so much nicer? Didn't I just say? Oh, the advantages of an in-person training is that enthusiasm, that that personal interaction. That's really the optimal thing. However, if you don't want to do that, then send them to our web-based training. So, so I say, hey, VPs of all the clubs, go to the training, and then we're going to do a follow-up. But will you tell me if they went through the training session, or do I just have to ask them? You know, oh. you know what I'm saying? Is, is there some follow-up? that you say, hey, yeah, your V vocations um, went through the training, did a great job, blah, 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 um, check. Is that? I can, we can do that. That's a great idea. I mean, I mean, because the Saturdays are, to me, they are hard. I'd rather them go yes. do the training mm -hmm. through you. You're going to give them the best training. Yeah. And then. We follow up as governor saying, okay, 
there was there well first of all there's going to be a training session please do it then you tell me if they did or not whatever i don't want to be too much of a school teacher here but then there's a follow-up maybe on a saturday and say okay you've done the training now what are you doing about it yeah absolutely i think pat you're thinking out of the box which is really and that's great just keep that up because we can i never thought about this is wonderful. I never thought about following up and saying, hey, here's, a, here's your people and here's the ones who came. Right, right. But yeah. it's absolutely definite because yeah. tonight, well, when we finish this, I will get a printout of everybody who is on this. Well, so your names will be there in your, your emails. So like for me, it's real easy to see who was there. Well, and the great thing about it too is that the VP of vocations missed the training, but it's it's online you can go to youtube and pick it up right yes. so look you missed the training please do it at your convenience we're going to meet here next month in may or whatever and then um let me tell you let me ask you what you got from it and what you're going to do about it excellent and then add one piece to that pat ask them if they did do the online training with us ask them oh what would you have added to that okay what did you Good. understand so do like an evaluation and then get it back to us because okay. that's the way we can uh, constantly be upping our game and making sure that we're being attentive to what, what's needed out there. No, that's good. Okay. Yeah. And another thing is we've had the trainings um, with all the members together, all the board members, and it is really wonderful. And a lot of times if they train online, they'll want to come again to the in-person one and they bounce different ideas off of each other. And it really is wonderful. I mean, it may be hard to get everybody together. You might ask how many of you would attend, uh, you know, a, a training, an in-person training, you might do it that way. And if most of them would, then you could have it. If most of them wouldn't, then you wouldn't have it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I just uh, piggybacking on what Candace said, we just gathered, um, where did we meet? I forget where we were in October, Arlington, Virginia. And we met, the board met there and it was so wonderful for all of us to be present at the same place and just yeah. uh, just the kind of interaction and the kind of ideas, it was great. It really was. Yeah. Somebody else questions about the, the, the training and the mechanics. And this is Sally, and, and I don't have any questions, but I, I just wanted to thank you for this training session. It's great information. I look forward to getting the PowerPoint. Uh, I think I can use that in a number of different ways as well. So Absolutely. thank you. This is this is great, and I look forward to the other training session. Yeah. Please, when, when you get the PowerPoint, you know, just feel free to take slides out and, and use it so that it that it that it fits you. But let me tell you, okay, so now Thursday, we're going to do some statistics here. So we'll look at Sarah and we'll look at, um, oh, what's been going on recently. We'll talk about um, the, um, we'll talk about who's who in the organization, because I think you need to know uh, who, uh, like the people in SI are and the people in the foundation are. Uh, we'll talk about vocations. What's what's going on in the United States? We'll look at the newest statistics for that because uh, we usually get the new CARA statistics and then talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about how club club operations should be going and event planning because sometimes clubs are doing some really interesting event, but how does that fit into everything? So again, I think this one will be I don't think we'll go much more than an hour on that. Saturday's the one that always makes me a little nervous because I have to go to four o'clock mass and we're going to do this at one o'clock and I'm scheduled to lecture at four. So we're going to, we will finish. And then that fourth session, if you're around, if you're at the rally, 345, uh, we're doing a round table. And this is good because what this is, is district governors are in the same place at the same time, face to face, and we'll talk about what you want to talk about. And what I really hope, because I think many of you will like this, I was going to see if I can't get uh, Don Simino to uh, come and talk about the portal and the new Club Express and what you as district governors can do with that. So I'll be asking Don about that. Okay, any other questions until we meet on Thursday? 
Okay, let's let's close with our uh, prayer for the perseverance of vocations. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh God, you have constituted your only begotten Son, supreme and eternal priest, for the glory of your majesty and the salvation of mankind. Grant that those whom he has chosen, ministers and dispensers of his mysteries, may be found faithful in fulfilling the ministry they have received. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Hey, thank you, you Anne. This was great. Thank you, Anne. Hey, thank, yeah, thank you, you. all.